Hello, I'm Juliette Sali, and in this week's IG Macro Intelligence, we take a look at the ongoing trade dispute between China and the United States and how the Apple iPhone got caught in the middle. Well, US President Biden met with Chinese Premier Li Chang at the annual G20 summit this past week in an attempt to thaw frosty relations. Bilateral relations have deteriorated since the US imposed additional trade tariffs on Chinese goods in 2018 with the imposition of further tit-for-tat sanctions and trade restrictions. Recent data showed ongoing tensions are a contributing factor to China's slowing economy as exports and imports fell in August. Exports were down 8.8% eight percent in August year on year according to customs data that was off a 14 and a half percent drop in July meanwhile imports contracted 7.3 percent slower than an expected nine percent decline and last month's 12.4 percent fall economists say more policy support could be needed however deflationary pressures have eased So why is Apple a target? Their shares lost $200 billion in value last week after the Chinese government reportedly banned government employees from bringing their devices to work. Japan's Nikkei News reported at least one state-owned company had told its employees that anyone working with trade secrets could not bring their iPhones, Apple Watches or AirPods into work from next month. China's state-owned companies employ more than 56 million people and the reported ban sent Apple shares tumbling, although some analysts say the sell-off was overdone. The move comes after US federal agencies banned their employees from having the TikTok app on government-provided devices amid concerns of spying. The ban doesn't prevent ordinary Chinese people from buying the latest Apple products, but does emphasize the growing tension between state control and China's economic future. Well, ANZ sees China as a key risk for a slowdown in the Australian economy and that this will ultimately dominate the pressures on inflation. AMP's chief economist Shane Oliver says the losers will be consumers, while the overall economy is also at risk given that China is our biggest export market. However, he states our improving relations with China under the Albanese government may help, while any adjustment to growth could be gradual, as it has been since tensions escalated in 2018. And that is your IG Macro Intelligence for today. I'll see you next week.